gravimetric analysis. So to begin, here is our list of materials that we're going to need, and you see them all pictured for you on the screen. So next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and measure out the sample and form the precipitate. So I'm using a pipette to measure out 25 milliliters of my hard water sample, which contains calcium ions. So putting the tip of the pipette under the surface of the liquid, but not on the bottom of the beaker, I'm going to draw up the volume that I need. In this case, 50 milliliters. I'm looking at eye level to make sure that my meniscus is properly resting on the mark. And then I'm going to transfer all of that solution into my reaction flask. We're using a flask in this case because I can swirl it without uh, risking running out, um, having the liquid escape the flask. So now what I need to do next is to take my sample here. And we can see that it looks like uh, it's a clear solution. So the calcium is dissolved in the water sample. And I'm going to add some sodium carbonate to this. Now, I know the concentration of my uh, sodium carbonate is much higher than what I have in uh, my water for um, calcium. So it doesn't really matter how much of this I add as long as it is in excess. So I'm adding some sodium carbonate solution, which is forming the precipitate calcium carbonate. So I'm swirling my reaction mixture just to make sure everything is reacted and mixed together well. So now that I've formed my precipitate here, I'm going to go ahead and filter it. So I need to start by uh, preparing a piece of filter paper. So to fold the filter paper, you're going to want to fold it in half first into uh, a taco and make sure you crease all your edges fold it again into a pizza slice. So whenever I insert this into the funnel, I'm going to grab three of those layers and push open the fourth so that I get a nice little funnel. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a pencil to put my name on this. We want to do that before weighing because the mass of the pencil will increase the mass of the filter paper. And you don't want to use ink or something that's going to get washed away by water. So I'm going to go ahead and mass my filter paper here. So now I'm going to take that filter paper. And again, I want to grab three of the four layers and push open the fourth so I get a nice funnel. And I'm going to put this into my plastic funnel and I'm going to wet it down because that paper wants to come out of the funnel. So I'm just going to wet it so it sticks down in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and take our uh, mixture here, our solution, our precipitate, and I want to filter that through the filter paper. Now you want to be careful not to add too much and you don't want to go past the top of the filter paper in the funnel because then there's gaps where some of that solid could potentially uh, filter down into my waste beaker. So you can see here what I mean by that gap being there. So we always want to make sure that the um, sample is entirely within the filter paper. And I can just go ahead and keep adding and filtering until my uh, solution is all gone, all filtered through. So we're going to keep doing this until we don't have any more solution left. So I'm adding the last bit from the reaction flask. And when you look at the edge of um, the flask, you see that it's all cloudy. So that's extra precipitate that we need to uh, rinse off. So I'm going to use my uh, wash bottle here just to rinse down the sides and try to get all of that precipitate um, off of the sides of the glass. So I'm just going to add that to our mixture. I'm going to do it one more time. So we want to make sure we don't leave any of that solid behind because the mass of solid will help us predict the concentration of calcium uh, and help us figure out how hard the water sample is. 
So I've run it through a couple of times and now I'm pretty satisfied. If you look at the flask, it looks pretty clean. So I'm going to allow the rest of that to filter through. And now I want to wash the precipitate. So I want to make sure that none of those spectator ions, like my um, sodium ions, I want to make sure that isn't stuck to my precipitate because that will increase the mass of the precipitate. It's also helpful to kind of wash all the precipitate down into the bottom of the filter paper, which makes it a little bit easier to take it out. So all of that has run through. I'm just going to use a um, little metal spatula to help me separate the wet filter paper from the sides of the funnel. And I'm going to carefully unfold this and lay it flat on this watch glass. So this is just a, a surface for me to place the uh, sample on. So right now the sample is wet and we need to get rid of that water. So we're going to dry the precipitate uh, in an oven. So this oven is set to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not too warm. Just needs to be hot enough to uh, help dry that filter paper. Now when we take a look at the filtrate, we see that it's a clear solution. So I caught all of my solid. And I can actually test this by adding a couple drops of the uh, sodium carbonate solution. And when I did, it remained clear. So I'm confident that I've reacted out all of the calcium that was present in the water sample. So now I'm going to go ahead and mass my dry filter paper. Remember that you want to use the data that's posted with the assignment here. So um, we're going to use that mass to determine the concentration.